How's it going, everybody? Brian Alvarez here on Wrestling Observer Live. We are here every day, Monday through Friday, noon Pacific, 3 Eastern, Sunday, 3 Pacific, 6 Eastern, Saturday mornings with Jim Valley, 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 Eastern, Sundays with Andrew Zarian. And it is Fun Friday here on the show. That's right. We're going to try and have some fun today because we have no shows to review. We can pre- preview some stuff, but... I mean, I guess we could talk a little bit about uh, Dynamite since we didn't talk about it yesterday. Because there was no show yesterday, but we'll see. We may take your phone calls today. We'll uh, decide as the show goes on. But there is a lot of news to talk about. We've got the two-night SummerSlam era upon us. So we'll tell you about that, where it's going to be. Get ready to get your tickets, New Jersey. We've got updates on NXT moving to the CW Network. That actually starts this coming Tuesday. We have a possible location for the first Raw on Netflix. We're actually going to start today, after the break, talking about this Ray Phoenix story. Because this, this is, uh, is pro wrestling tribalism at its finest. The feedback I've seen to this one. We've got AW Grand Slam Notes. The Jacksons met with Shane McMahon. Swerve Strickland didn't interview MJF. Is MJF is doing a movie, which I can't even believe the movie he's doing. Got updates on Soraya, Thunder Rosa, Dynamite's rating, and plenty more. If you want to text us for Fun Friday, 425-780-7566. That is 425-780-7566. FRW online at gmail.com. FRW online, threads, Instagram, and Cameo. At Brian Alvarez on Twitter, slash X. And by the way, today is not only Fun Friday, it's Fan Friday. So the first five people that order a cameo today can get it for 20 bucks. 20 bucks! So get up there now while you can. Back in a moment, Observer Live. Brian Alvarez here, Wrestling Observer Live. Mike Semper, VV, also WrestlingObserver.com. Oh, it's Fun Friday. It is. Oh, I'm going to have fun on this show. Hey, I do have one thing I got to talk about. So, uh, Vinny was unavailable last night. And so the Brian and Vinny show talking AEW and NXT is tonight. So if you've, if you missed the full NXT report, if you missed the AEW Grand Slam report, uh, subscribers tonight, WrestlingObserver.com, Vinny and I are going to do the Brian and Vinny show, uh, probably around, uh, nine Pacific midnight Eastern tonight. But that is, that is the plan for tonight. And yes, a granny is going to make an appearance on the show to say hello to everybody. Awesome. She went home yesterday, and there actually is a part of this story. Like, the story itself. She's 94 years old. She had a massive heart attack. So what the doctor said. Massive heart attack at 2 a.m. Her, like, artery was completely 100% blocked. Somehow they get her to the hospital, and by 10 a.m. she's fine. Put a stent in. And that that's that's crazy enough. It's a hardy woman. But there is another part of this story that I did not learn until yesterday. <laughs> the fact that she was up at two in the morning trolling people on the internet? No, that's the usual. Oh. But like the other part of the story is even more wild. So we'll talk about it when she comes on the show tonight i i don't want to reveal it here is this after dark level did she travel this is not time? after dark level but this okay. is one of those things where you know <laughs> granny's gonna say god was looking over me and when you hear this story it's gonna be like okay perhaps i'm converted here <laughs> like wow so anyway we'll talk about that tonight as long as you don't make the hot tag to joel osteen we'll be all right hey maybe she did uh i did watch <laughs> uh four episodes of the vince documentary i'm at i'm at four so i have two more and um what have you learned so far Brian? absolutely nothing <laughs> I, I will say here's here's the thing i actually am enjoying it i think it's very well produced you know the big complaint people have is there's no new information which is true and it is merely this happened and then this happened next and then this happened next and this etc 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 and it's like very linear that's what it is and for what it is it's quite excellent. They have great footage. They have all of the original music from the era. They don't have to do recreations because they got all of the footage somehow. And, you know, they talk to everybody. And, you know, 
they they give they give certain people enough rope, if you know what I mean. The one thing, and it's not even I'm not really disappointed. I it's just it's just funny to me that there are certain things that people say, and I'm not talking about ninety three thousand. Although that's another story entirely. But anyway, you know, there are certain things people say that are not true. And you know, it's one thing if you, I'll just say, for example, you know, Vince claiming he put 93,000 people in the in the Pontiac Silverdome. That number is incorrect. And it is not something subject to debate, as Dave noted. Like, he had everything. All of the numbers are receipts from the promoter from WWF. And, you know, the, the promoter of that event, what does he gain from saying, we didn't do as good as everyone thinks we did? He has nothing to gain from that. That, that's like ridiculous to argue to argue that would be like if if i you know i i um through this business you know i made uh i don't know whatever and people say you know brian made 50 million dollars at wrestlingobserver.com during his career and then one day i come up and i go well you know here's the receipts I actually only made like 23 million like why would i do that if everybody believes i made 50 million so the actual promoter's like that 93 173 uh, we didn't actually do that it was 78,000 paid why would he? So anyway, can I note something? Right but hold there? on. So that's one thing. God. Okay, that's one thing. All right, you want to you want to make this feel bigger than it really was. You want to claim ninety three thousand if you're Vince McMahon, if you're Hulk Hogan, you want to claim ninety three thousand, whatever. But there's other mistakes on this show that it doesn't matter one way or the other whether you correct them or not. But these people continuously make the same mistake over and over. Eric Bischoff tells the story every single time. I went to Ted Turner. He said, what do we need to do to be competitive with Vince? I said, they're Monday night live. Ted turns to his secretary and goes, give him two hours Monday nights. The show was an hour, okay? I rewatched all of them. The show was an hour. But he still, to this day, tells the story the exact same way. He gave us two hours on Monday. No, he didn't. For years, you were in an hour. I don't know why. And then the other one is they generally kind of have the story right about Steve Austin. You know, the Austin 316 promo and everything like that. And, you know, Austin tells a story. And, you know, Bruce Pritchard. And, you know, I think he believes this. Okay? But Bruce Pritchard goes, you know, he cuts his promo and my eyes grew wide. And, like, the very next night, everywhere you looked, there were Austin 316 signs. That didn't happen. I went back and I watched it a second time. Austin came out and he did that promo and the next day on a scale of of if he was a, if he was over like a 5 before the next day he was over at about five and a half. <laughs> that was it. It was months and months and months. It wasn't until he started that feud with Bret Hart and they started doing all that crazy stuff in like November of that year. It was actually November of um I think it was November 96. It wasn't until November of 96 that he really started to get over because he was feuding with Brett. But they have this story in their mind that he cut that one promo and it was off to the races. It wasn't. That didn't happen. And there there are uh, several of them uh, like that uh, throughout the show. But, you know, it's just like people's memories. But I, I do wish, like, I know Eric watches this. I know somebody has to have told him, brother, you didn't get two hours. You got one. Like, next time you do one of these 85,000 Monday Night War shows, just say, Ted gave me an hour. I don't know, man. Whatever. <laughs> well, one thing about that record, too, was it was stamped by the Guinness Book of World Records. They beat like a, I don't know what it was. I think it was a Rolling Stone show somewhere in South America, Buenos Aires or something like that. And... At a time when people didn't know how worked some of that Guinness Book of World Records stuff actually was. So why would they say anything else other than that? I, I'm not surprised. And again, it's for some people, it's so programmed into their brain. That's what they say. It, sometimes you believe it. Sometimes it's not malicious. You, you can actually make yourself believe things over time when you keep telling the same stories over and over again. So... In a way, that really kind of falls on the fact checkers. And if you want to go through the effort of 
volleying back at that in the same way that Dave and P and Shoemaker volley back. But that was also a concern with people that found out it was David Shoemaker and uh, Bill Simmons and the same crew that did the Andre the Giant documentary on HBO, which was very good, but it did have factual errors in it. So that seems like that's the same case here. I don't know if that's worth blowing things up if it's not a major issue that's got something to do with someone's life or something like that it's more of a wrestling thing you know i don't know how much you have to really go in and tear that stuff apart i don't why care talk about it i don't care it's just funny that like yeah. nobody has told eric that he's done this wrong 50 that's... times it does that's the point it doesn't matter if it was an hour or two hours it doesn't matter so, like, correct it next time, brother. <laughs> Chimney Christmas. Uh, now. Yes. All right. I said I was going to talk about Phoenix, but uh, looks like I uh, I don't have time in this segment. You ranted yourself out of time. So I will talk about it when we come back from the break here. And then all of the other news as well. If you want Texas, as I said, 425 is the phone number. That is 425-780-7566. If we have time, we'll open up those phone lines and uh, and we'll do some fun Friday. Back in a moment, Observer Live. Back in the show, Brian Alvarez here, Wrestling Observer Live. Mike Sempervivi, also of WrestlingObserver.com. Let's talk about Phoenix. Let's, uh... Is it a fun Friday for Phoenix? If Ray Phoenix's intentions are to go to WWE, it will be a while before that can happen. This from the front page of WrestlingObserver.com. $35 million. In this week's Observer, Dave Meltzer reported, AW is adding on injury time to Phoenix's current contract, quote, which is nearly but not quite one year. Recent online rumors had both he and brother Penta already signing with WWE, but both men are currently under AW contract, which made that impossible. AW head Tony Khan made, quote, significant offers for the brothers to stay, but they declined. Meltzer reiterated Penta will be going to WWE after his deal is up in the next two months. And that word is WWE made him a competitive offer. So that solidified his decision to leave. Penta hasn't wrestled for AW since July, has worked in Mexico seven times since. Phoenix's last AW match was also in July, but he also hasn't wrestled since a CMLL trios match that same month. How and if they plan to use Phoenix going forward remains to be seen. So, uh, the tribalism is in full swing today from people that don't know what's going on. I, for one, am shocked. Okay. Yes, he was injured, and so Tony added time to his contract. He is not the only person this has happened to. It didn't happen to him because he wants to leave. There are people working on AEW television now that are working on contract extensions because they were injured. And in WWE, this happens all the time. It's one of the reasons Brian Danielson was with WWE for so long. He was injured, and so they extended his contract. They do this in WWE. They do this in AEW. They do this... I don't know if they do this in... An impact. But in AEW and WWE, if you are mad at Tony Khan for doing this, then you must also be mad at... It was actually mostly Vince McMahon. We really don't know now since TKO took over, but Drew McIntyre did have his contract extended due to injury this year. So it appears that everywhere, this happens everywhere, everybody does this. Now, it is wrestling. It is wrestling. And so it doesn't always happen. <laughs> If you if you are somebody depends on the asset and it's like, eh, who cares? Like they're not going to add time to your contract. If you are someone important, sup Miro, they will add time to your contract. You know I'm right. So, it's just the way things go. <laughs> Man, I I'd, I'd let Miro go. Yes. I'd let if him you're go. that disgruntled or there's that much of an issue when it comes to creative and all that sort of stuff and the person is going to be a headache or it's going to be a, head a headache of an issue that is not going to change, then yes, I think there are ways where, look, I don't know if you buy some out or something, whatever happens there, I think that should be part of the deal. But 
yes, you don't want to hand over an asset that easily. For what purpose other than your fandom? From what business point of view does that make sense? Taking your fandom out of it. If somebody can answer how that makes sense, again, because again, if the two sides are fine with working with each other or somebody is fine with sitting home and isn't going to raise a stink, what's the big deal? I mean, this has been standard practice for a long time. It's nothing new. And it's not only in pro wrestling either. Now, there is a question I have based on reading this story here. WWE made Penta a competitive offer. Well, how did they do that? He's under contract. Oh, well, there you go. Huh. Hmm. That's kind of weird. Well, that's another thing that happens on both sides, even though Tony Khan has talked a lot about WWE tampering and there was Swerve and there were all these people that once Vince lost power, you know, supposedly somebody from Triple H's side called and tried to offer deals and probably did that. Remember at the time, everybody was all stirred up with Buddy Matthews and we had this whole weird thing with, uh, what's his name? House of Black, Alistair, you know, constantly cutting promos. And this was all at a time when Tony Khan was saying they are tampering. We're not hearing that with this case. And one of the reasons why I think is even though that happens and that's an issue, the reality is there are liaisons. There are people that talk between sides and people can express things, performers that is, to their current bosses that say, I want to get out of here. I do want to go over and do that. And so these things are going to happen, you know? And well, it's also why... possible. I have a theory. I'm not saying this happened, okay? But I mean, these guys also have the same agents. Let me put well, that in hold there, on. too. It's not it's... like, again... It's possible that he thought his contract had expired and he spoke to WWE and then he was told, actually, we're extending it for your injury time. You're not expired yet. So it is possible that in his mind, he thought he was free to talk and was later told, you actually are not. And there could also, again, depending on who negotiates these contracts, and I wouldn't think this would be in Phoenix's, but I could see it being in other people who are represented at a higher level or by different people, that there is a window that will come in before my 90 days or whatever it would be with the end of my contract where there is a soft period where my agent or representation can reach out. They, there's no official offer that can be made, but I am allowed to test the waters in that time. You don't know if that's in there or not. SummerSlam is going to New York, New Jersey, East Rutherford, the MetLife Stadium, Saturday, August 2nd, Sunday, August 3rd. I won't be there. I was going to say Sorry. your spot. I, I did that once. I will never do it again. That's just, <laughs> you don't want to do it with the humidity. I will too. never do it again. No, I will not be there. Have fun. <laughs> Extra ticket for somebody out there. Thank you me Never later. go to Jersey again. There will be some changes, it says here. WrestlingObserver.com to WWE NXT's presentation on the CW Network. NXT makes its move to the CW starting with the next Tuesday's premiere. Shawn Michaels confirmed, from a look and physical standpoint, WWE has some changes in store for NXT. Hmm, maybe some graphics? <laughs> Certainly we want to make a big splash on the CW. We'll have some big changes. I think more of that will be from a look and physical standpoint. We will still be what NXT is, which bring in some of the most talented, young, diverse athletes in all the nation, developing them into the WWE superstars of tomorrow. The hunger, the passion, it's always been the core value of NXT, is always going to be there. You know, I don't know what it is. There's a mystery here, okay? Oh, yeah. There's a mystery. I have been told... That there is a reason that they refuse to identify the wrestlers on screen. But they won't tell me what it is. And I don't think it's just to irritate me. There's like some, they got some cockamamie idea about why they can't do it. But let me tell you something. You need to do it. You identify everybody on the CW, put a graphic up for everybody backstage, and I will say it again. Like I said it the other day, if you work for NXT, if you are a wrestler in NXT, if you haven't made NXT TV yet, say your own name. 
It is your responsibility. They are not going to do it for you. If you don't say your name, it could be weeks before your name is said on the program. So whoever you're talking to, get your name out there. Or you say, hey, Mike, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to talk about this next story here. And when you respond, I want you to say, Brian, and then continue on. Got it. I'll say your name, Mike. All right, Brian. So, so this is the responsibility now of the wrestlers. Okay, yes. it's it's like, it's like you might you okay you the wrestler you you are responsible for finding the hard cam. Okay, we're not gonna film like our job is to film you, but we're not gonna do it. Like you got to find the hard cam, brother. Red light. Yes, even though we we hire like you know we got producers and directors and camera people. No. You must wrestle your match, but also you must be your own director. Find that hard cam. This is stupid. Do you understand me? Flat out stupid. But Here's the- that's the way they operate. So it is your responsibility to identify yourself, whether yeah. you say it or whether you get your buddy to say it as you guys go back and forth. Thank you. You're welcome, I mean. If you're one of those wrestlers out there, what you throw back in Brian's face is, man, you sound a lot like Dave telling you how to program your DVR I will. and being responsible That's for the different. overrun. That's different. Here's the thing. If if somebody is not going to have a graphic on NXT, you're starting fresh with the CW in a lot of ways. Don't have them on. Don't have them on. Have them in the background in a locker room scene where you don't have to do something like that. If they're going to be a part of the show, then yes, go ahead and do that. But guess what? Only your best should be on NXT and at least on NXT TV. And the first two weeks are going to set the tone for that show. So we'll see what they do. We'll see what the new graphics look like, all that sort of stuff. And we'll see if we find out a reason that they're messing with you. Because whatever this reason is, I have a feeling it will make you blow up, even if it's not directly to piss you off see here's the thing with the dvr argument okay it is not my job it's not it is their job to make sure that the entire program airs on the television station that's it their is. job okay yes. yes it's true it is not the wrestler's job to find out where the hard cam is for a shot nor is it the wrestler's job to identify themselves you don't have to do it but you know what if you don't, you ain't going to get over because yeah. yeah, nobody's going to know who you are. Over. So now yeah. it is your job if you want to get over. If you don't want to get over, fine. Don't do it. Just be a nameless, faceless, whatever on the show. Back in a moment, Observer Live. Back in the show, Brian Alvarez here, Wrestling Observer Live. So Rosendoza00 says, mm-hmm. I'm having a bad day, Lola Vice. Rolls right off the tongue. Sounds supernatural. As in very natural, not supernatural. Super, comma, that's a natural, different. Yeah. That's a different problem with NXT. Well, well, you know what rolls right off the tongue is Rosendoza zero zero. Okay, <laughs> guess what, Rosendoza zero zero. You're not over. No. If you want to be over, get your freaking name on national television. If you're happy, let me say it again. If you're on NXT and you're happy not being over and not having anybody know who you are, then fine, continue on. Fine, I don't care. They, they will chant whoop that person, I guess. Yeah. I don't know. Whoop that guy. That's a great chant. That rolls off the tongue. Whoop that guy. Mm. Who is it? I don't know. Some guy. It's not like wrestlers have not spoken in the third person for how long? You know? Not like Lola Vice couldn't just go out there and say you're not going to do that to Lola Vice. You know, like that has never happened ever in in all of professional wrestling. It'll be okay. Do that. Make people remember who you are. Or at the very least, make Brian remember who you are so he stops getting so angry about this. I'm not angry. I don't care at all. Just trying to help. You don't care. You don't care. I'm just trying to help because that's the kind of guy I am. Oh, yes. I would like like the talent to get over. But you see, they're young Uh, and they don't understand this business. Yeah, and the an people age. that do understand this business either don't understand this business or have forgotten important things like get yourself over and get your name on national television. Maybe we should. Do you realize? Those... Do you yes. realize that back in the day, uh huh, eighties, 
Yes. Okay. I remember him. Vince McMahon would pay all of the wrestlers X amount of money for these house shows. Okay? Mm -hmm. But then, for a TV taping, a television taping, you're going to be on on national tele, primetime wrestling, whatever, he'd pay you 50 bucks. That's how the business worked. $50. Because what he said was, what he said was, you're making 50 bucks, but like, you're on national television. Free this advertise. is your chance to get yourself over. Mm-hmm. So you think these geeks went on television and like didn't try to get themselves over? That's all they did was try and get themselves over. You say your name. You say your name at the beginning of the promo. You say your name at the end of the promo. You tell Mean Gene to say your name. Like, get yourself over. You're on national television for crying out loud. Because they ain't doing it for you. Now, moving on. Mm-hmm. Another fun story. <laughs> On their way home from Grand Slam, the Young Bucks ran into an interesting name from the... I'm still laughing at this. From the (laughs) pro wrestling industry. Matt and Nick Jackson posted a photo of themselves with Shane McMahon at the airport on Thursday morning, captioning it with interesting flight today. The photo comes amid persistent rumors that McMahon could end up joining AEW. He met with Tony Khan this July to discuss possibilities for the future. McMahon issued a statement after the meeting with Khan, said they discussed many things. Yeah, really? Okay. Khan said he really enjoyed talking with McMahon. Mm. A chance meeting between McMahon and Mercedes Monet also happened at LaGuardia in New York in July. I do have a question: like, why the heck is this guy flying all over the place? Like, what's he got doing? What's he got going on? Who? Shane. He's got business. All he does is fly. Well, you got to get to these places somehow. Well, what I have, uh, what I've been told is that. It actually appears that in both of these instances, it was actually a coincidence. He just happened to be on the same plane with the Young Bucks, and he just happened to be at the airport when Mercedes Monet was there. I know that some people don't believe anything, but I was told that those both, in both cases, it just happened to uh, to be in the Where does s- Shane live? I, I don't know, New York, I think. Well, because here's, I mean, it's not like... But have you people- seen this photo, by the way? Yes. Howling. I know. Matt Jackson's face. I know. Cat that ate the canary. Just dying. Dying looking at this picture. I laugh harder every time. Because I know what it is. It was like, they just happened to be on the same flight. They took a photo together. And his face is such that now everybody's talking about it. Oh, Matt knows. Matt this, Matt that. I mean, maybe he does. But whether he does or not, that was a perfect, perfect face for that photo. He was dying. Business in New York and Los Angeles and out of different airports in Florida. And it's not like there are multiple rich guy airports. Like you're going to cross paths sometimes with the same people if you're frequent travelers. So, you know, even who, whatever. Here's here's kind of a funny thing about any of this. If you actually wanted to do something with the fact that the Young Bucks are executive vice presidents who murdered their boss, like bringing Shane in actually would be something and it would be something to get people talking. But is that really what you want to do? Probably not. Would he even go for it when every push came to shove? You know, who knows? I don't maybe look. One Shane McMahon Darby Allen match. If if he does come in, just just give me oh, that. Oh God, no! I can. Oh, Brother, man, he it, almost killed he himself the last time he was in the ring. Oh man, Sting could make an appearance. Oh, no. it could be insane. Listen, I, I have no idea what's going on with Shane. McMahon. Ric Flair could limp out there. I really have oh. no idea what's going on with the guy. <laughs> if you asked me, here's the thing though. If you it's asked me, do you think Shane McMahon is coming in? I would say, I believe it's less than fifty percent. I actually don't think that he's going to be coming in. Well, with, saying, with that wait, said, less than with that said, percent is not several years ago. How much less? Several years ago, everybody was talking about Shane McMahon should come back. And remember on this very show, I was like, "Why do you guys want Shane McMahon back so much? Why do you guys love Shane McMahon?" It was like a thing for months. And then suddenly one day this bloke appears on Raw and everybody just lost their minds. I was like, oh my God. Shane O'Mac. He's back. The music hits all that. Come on. Well, he ain't going to have the music if he goes to AEW. Here comes the money. I don't, I don't think he's, I just don't feel like he's going. I, I just don't think, think he's so going. Either. 
Here's what I can see him doing in the future, and it doesn't have to be in the next six months. It doesn't have to be in the next year. But him appearing at some show in the box or something like that, or you do some sort of sight gag, whether you give him a graphic or he just happens to be in the background of something they're doing, you could absolutely do that. Give him some money to do that. And what you'll get from everybody on the internet losing their mind for days, it'll be better than a lot of things that happen out of their shows, some of their big shows where it's just a complete disaster. So, hey, why not? Why is the camera stuck on me? It's creepy now. (laughs) If you can make it work. Damn it. There we go. (laughs) Former. Now go. There we go. Is it back to you? You asked. You asked where he was at. Former AEW World Champion MGF has booked a role. In Adam Sandler's Happy Gilmore sequel. He booked the role. This movie came out the year he was born. The original Happy Gilmore came out in 1996. That is the year that MGF was born. Now he is in the sequel. Yeah. Sandler, Julie Bowen, Christopher McDonald's being filmed for Netflix. Bowen. Oh, is that what it is? Yes. Oh, it's not Anthony Bowen's? Okay. <laughs> The details as to his role under wraps, as is the sequel's plot. Oh, yeah. Well, we must he... keep the plot of Happy yes. Gilmore 2 top secret. <laughs> Don't let that get out. The very deep Adam Sandler plots, yes. Guess who's uh, guess who else is in this movie? Who? Adam Sandler. <laughs> and you know who else? Who else, Norm? Bad Bunny. <laughs> Bad Bunny. I wonder what he's going to play. Well, <laughs> how much do you want to bet the role is just now he's got to save? Uh, it was his grandma's deal, right? Last time, right? He's got to save something else this time, and now he's got to be a wrestler. At some point, he's going to have to wrestle to try to make some of that money. It's one of the oldest stereotypes out there. You know, it's either that or going to be a charity thing like Hulk Hogan did in Rocky Three, but. It's going to be fisticuffs in the wrestling ring somehow. I don't think MJF is going to be there as, like, you know, deep thespian acting MJF playing some other different Hey, role. maybe you will. You don't know that. Uh, I don't. He could be Jaws. Wasn't he in that movie? The old James Bond villain running down the, uh, at the end. Maybe he could be the new Carl Weathers. Maybe he can be the new Carl Weathers, MJF can. Wednesday's Dynamite Grand Slam, 702,000 viewers. At a point two three, best number the show's done since August twenty first. Went head to head with a WNBA playoff game with Caitlin Clark. Everybody likes to say, "Ah, Caitlin Clark doesn't mean nothing." She did two point five four million viewers for a WNBA game compared to the same week in twenty twenty three. Are they really? Oh, never mind. Yeah, people actually do that. Yeah, I know they do, but you know the fact. Never mind. I'm sorry. The factoring in AEW. All right, sure. Hey, this person. How those demos match up? This person here says uh, PW Insider is reporting that uh, MJF is going to play one of Happy's sons. Oh, Jesus Christmas. (laughs) Maxwell Jacob Gilmore. Oh. Yes. Hey, it's a good time to be a pro wrestler, especially if you work in AEW, because you get to be an independent contractor. And if your boss doesn't need you, and gives you the rope to do this sort of stuff, absolutely take advantage of it. Because it could be argued, if you're just a fan of wrestling and don't care about any of that other stuff, you want to see MJF every week. You could say for business purposes, you kind of need MJF to be there when Swerve's not and there's other people that aren't. You should have all hands on deck. Then again, from a wrestler's point of view, this is fantastic. And I would argue against any fan that says we need to have him there every week. No, you don't. If times were great, I would say yes. But you know what? Him leaving and coming back keeps him fresh, and it keeps him important in the grand scheme of things. Hey, look, this guy, uh, he pulled it off. Maybe MGF plays Happy Gilmore Jr. Well, that seems to be what it is, brother. He also says, what do you believe is the actual endgame with these Shane McMahon AW photo ops? Well, here's the thing. Like I said, Young Bucks, Shane McMahon, coincidence. And they knew that they would get people talking. Mercedes Monet, coincidence. Knew they would get people talking. I know, I know people insist 
that the Shane McMahon Tony Khan picture was not a leak. But how? <laughs> how? They're both looking at the camera. And they're having I think I think the claim is that, well, you know, it was like in an airport lounge and some yes. fan snuck it out and then went running or whatever. I mean, maybe. As they're both looking, but they're kind of posed up. You know? I don't no. think this is a build for anything. It just no. is like it's happened, and now people know it's something that, you know, will get people talking on the internet. At the, that, well, there you go. And if you're AEW or if you're Shane, if that is legit, that somebody just went in and knew they were in there and were like, came in with their phone in their hand, and went, oh, I'm sorry about that, and you got everybody look at the camera, okay, fine. You, what you found out was it got people talking and it, it, it was in a positive way. It's not like it's a negative thing that has come with any of this stuff. It's been mostly fun. So if you're AEW and you're Shane, that's it. Great. You know, whether it was done intentionally or not, it got people talking and it's not in a wholly negative way. So go ahead and continue on with it. First says Roxanne Julia kicking off Tuesday's NXT. Well, that tells me there's a title change for sure. Although to be fair, I have long thought well, backer. that given it is a it is the CW debut, I believe that both Julia and Trick are winning the titles on that show. Double title change on the debut episode of NXT on the CW. Back in a moment, Observer Live. Back in the show, Brian Elber is here, Wrestling Observer Live. You know this person texting makes a good point. What's that? Said there's a reason why WWE trademarks names. Trades marks? Trademarks names. Word. So they should actually put those names on TV. What's the point otherwise? Let's trademark a name so we can use it. But then, I got an idea. We'll never actually use it. How about that? That's what you did with mine for a lot of time here. I've always said your name. It's a pretty, pretty unforgettable name. Mike Sempervivi. How about some merch? I had a couple of... You could make your own merch, dude. Just make your design and put it in the store. Do I have to saying, hold your hand? It was, the fact that it was never broached... Am I your talk mother? About, talk about a lot of business things here. Don't try to change the issue. You think no. it's you think it's been broached to me? If you have a shirt, make the shirt and put it in the store. Jim Valley's done like 50. Yeah, but then would I have to give you money for that? Why would no. you have to give me money for it? No. What are you talking because about? Because you would take a cut of it. I don't even know how it works. I wouldn't take a cut. Actually, you know what? That's the most believable part about all of this is the fact that you have no idea what's going on. Why are you asking? Why does anyone ask me? I don't know. There's, there's plenty of people to ask, and I ain't one of them. He's trying to put ask a nice Tony. Excla- exclamation point on. He'll, he'll email me back. Not the Tony Khan. Address. <laughs> yeah, he'll mail you back on. Can you send that tie line already? <laughs> it's been four and a half years. Anyway, uh, that was a fun Friday. Well, I'm going to wrap it up. Hey, there's a new After Dark Radio on the site. Good. Go up and check it out. Blokes talking Christian ufology. It's part one of two. Part two will be next week. I've decided I'm just going to do long interviews every other week and uh, and cut them in two. And so there will be an After Dark every single Thursday. For everybody who's got a short attention span. What do you Brothers think about gotcha. that? Every, like other, every Thursday there's going to be an After Dark radio. Like so a lot. Go check it out. L- learn about some UFOs and demons. Yeah. Giants, demons, and other issues. I'm chasing some right now. The story of After Dark Radio. Some are chasing me. We'll talk to you next time. Wrestling Observer Live.